Welcome back. This is Strictly Strings, page 18. A reminder, before you continue on this page, make sure that you've looked at left hand, the D string, to make sure that your left hand is going to the correct places, whether you play violin, viola, cello, or the bass. Either way, check out that video to make sure you are set up correctly. As you learn new things, your brain is going to be focused on the new task at hand. So you want to make sure that the other tasks are at a level of proficiency. So you want to be able to focus on the new things without forgetting the good habits you're building for the things you've previously learned. We're layering lots of ideas, so the more you practice carefully, the better it will be the further along you go. So here's page 18. Let's remind ourselves what we're learning. We're learning notes on the staff. You already know open D, first finger, E, F sharp, and G, where they are on the instrument. Now we're getting comfortable with finding them on the staff. So violins and violas, you have open D, first finger, E, high, second finger, F sharp, and then third finger, G. Remembering that we always want to have our elbow pointing down, our wrist open, and playing on the tips of our fingers. For the cellos, we have open D, first finger E, reach on up the F sharp, and then fourth finger G. Remember that your spacing always should be large enough that the fingers from your right hand can interlock. Don't let those fingers smush. And then basses. Yours is always sort of special because your instrument's so big. You have open D, first finger E. Now go ahead and place that second finger down, but really reach, pull the thumb down with that second finger, and then get that pinky all the way up to F sharp. Then roll over to open G. And then when you're on that open string, the other note they'd like you to play on this page is putting your first finger down, which is A not open A, that would be lower on the staff. So for basses, open D, first finger E, reach for F sharp, open G, and then first finger A. We're gonna do a few exercises. Get ready for number one. So on number one, the first thing that they want us to notice is whole steps versus half steps. A whole step is defined as two notes that have a space in between them for another note. When we're living in a world of half steps and whole steps, a whole step is built of two half steps. Just like fractions, one over one is the same as half plus a half. So we have a whole step like D to E or a half step like F sharp to G. When we have a whole step, D to E, you'll see this bracket symbol. That means that there's a distance between those two notes because you haven't learned it yet. There is a note that fits right inside of there. What you're gonna find out is that this note is either D sharp or E flat. But that's eventually, not today. What we're focused on is this new symbol, the whole step. All right. Then the other possibility is the half step. And a half step is when you can't put a note in between. And the example that they show you is from F sharp to G since those are the notes that we've learned. So we have F sharp and then we have G and you'll see sort of a triangular shape connecting those. That triangle shape is consistent for representing a half step, meaning that when you put your F sharp down right next door, boom, is G. You're not reaching for a note that's further away. It's gonna be right next door. All right, so that's half steps and whole steps. So now let's take a look at number one. As you know, I'm a huge fan of this order of operations. Step one, say it, don't play it. Step two, air bow the rhythm so we get the rhythm in our arm separate from having to process the notes. Step three, pizzicato only so we can focus on playing the right rhythm and placing our fingers correctly with only pizzicato, therefore not being distracted by trying to make a great sound while holding the bow. And then once you've practiced it and you're very comfortable with the exercise, we add our bow and we put it all together. That way, when you add the bow hand, your left hand is still gonna go to the right places because you practiced correct repetitions with the left hand. Okay, so here we are. Step one, say it, don't play it. Number one. One, two, number one. D, D, rest, rest. E, E, rest, rest. 
F sharp, F sharp, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, F sharp, E, D, E, D, and done. Okay, so then we grab our bow. If we felt comfortable saying the note names, step two, we grab our bow. We build an excellent bow hand, make sure our pinky is curved and on top, making sure that our thumb is rounded out, not smushed in, noticing that when we build, we have this nice circular shape from the thumb to the pinky, and then we air bow number one. Remember the things we've learned. When we have a quarter note that has the down bow symbol, we move down to the ground. When we have the up bow symbol, we move up to the ceiling. Also remember, at the very last measure, we have a half note, so that bow is gonna be longer and slower. And then the final thing, we have the apostrophe in the final measure, which means that we're gonna lift our bow back to the frog when we do our repeat. Okay, here we are, air bow number one. One, two, air, bow, D, D, rest, rest, E, E, rest, rest, F sharp, F sharp, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, F sharp, E, D, E, long, bow, and then we'd repeat the exercise. Let's move on to the next one if you feel comfortable with the air bow. The next version is pizzicato. So let's bring our instruments up over a button. Place it on our shoulders, making sure our scroll is not too high, not too low, that the instrument is not pointed out or pointed in, adjust on the shoulder as needed, get our left hand ready by having on the tips of our fingers, our thumb relax on the side of the neck, our elbow is down, our wrist is not collapsed in, it's not forced out, nice long line from the knuckles to the elbow, cellists, we have our C string peg at the base of our neck behind our left ear, our left hand is ready, our elbow's not too high, it's definitely not against the ribs, our fingers are nice and curved and our second finger is by the thumb, and our bases, we have our left leg in a position where the base can rest against us comfortably so we don't have to hold on to the base. Remember, for those cellos and bases, pulling in to the string is key to success. So here we go. Instruments up, feet, seat, superhero pose, open those shoulders, and here's page 18, number one, Pizza Cato. One, two, number one, D, D, rest, rest, E, E, rest, rest, F sharp, F sharp, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, F sharp, E, D, E, D, done. Now, if you need to do it again, go back and watch this clip and play again. Or, if you feel ready, let's add the bow. So we have to make sure that we have a great bow hand, we have to make sure we have a great left hand, and we have to make sure we can read these notes on the staff. So here we are. Instruments up. Over. Hey, button. Feet seat. Shoulders open nice and tall. Page 18. Number one, with the bow. And with the repeat. One, two, number one. D, D, rest, rest, E, E, rest, rest, F sharp, F sharp, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, G, G, rest, rest, F sharp, E, D, E, Longbow and lift, repeat, D, D, E, E, F sharp, F sharp, G, G, A, A, G, G, F sharp, E, D, E, D, and done. Nice job. That was number one. 
Number two is a fantastic exercise because it teaches us how to sustain our bow and make sure that we move from one note to the other smoothly. The word for that is legato. We're gonna connect our bow from one note to the other and we don't want the bow to stop in between notes. So first, let's say it, and then we'll talk about the bow technique necessary. Here is page 18, number two, say the note name. Notice there are two repeat signs and two lifts. We will do both even when we say the notes. Ready? Say it, don't play it. One, two, say it, and G, and F sharp, and E, and D, hold, G, F sharp, G, lift your bow, G, F sharp, E, D, G, F sharp, Section B, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, repeat and go. D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, and done. Okay, now that we're going to air bow it, let's make sure that as we're moving our bow, it never stops. So you'll see G, F sharp, E, D. We never want our bow to stop like this. G, F sharp, E. Make sure that the motion is fluid and always moving like flowing water. Then we have a lift at the end of each section, so make sure to relax our shoulders and move back to the frog. Okay, here we are. Let's air bow. Page 18, number two. One, two, nice and smooth. G, F sharp, E, D, G, F sharp. Next section, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, left, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, left, done. Nice job air bowing. Feel free to air bow it again, making sure we have the smooth half note rhythm in our arm. And if you can say the note names at the same time as air bowing, you're getting extra practice reading notes on the staff. Okay, pizzicato. This is another great exercise because you start with the highest note. So we place our fingers down and then we remove fingers. That's a different experience than trying to build up the fingerboard. So you'll notice that at the end of the A section, when we repeat, we end on G. Terrific, you're already there. How nice. Then you work your way down to open D, but in that third measure, boom, all fingers down for G again. Then in the B section, a different challenge is that you're skipping notes. So you have open D, and then you have to get F sharp ready. And then open A, F sharp, and G. Now there's a fancier way that we can do this. We could keep our fingers down as we move to the open string, but that's something we might develop a little bit later. So here is page 18, number two, Pizza Gatto. Ready? One, two, number two, pizzicato. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, repeat. This is G. One, two, F sharp, and E, and D, and G, F sharp, G, B section, open D, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, and done. Now, if you feel ready, go ahead and add the bow, but make sure your left hand really feels comfortable placing the fingers down, because if you're really focused on the left hand, you're probably not focused on the bow. We want to make sure we really think about our bow hand and really work on making a great sound, and we can't do that if our brain is still very focused on what note is that? What note is that? What note is that? We can't do both things well, so we have to practice one thing until we're very good at it, and then we can add the next thing. So, a little self-assessment. If you're ready, and you can do it all, well, by all means. Here we go. Page 18, number two, with the bow. One, two, with the bow. Here is G. G, F sharp, E, D. Left, right, beat. G, F sharp, E, D, D, F sharp, G, B section, open D, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, G, A, D, left, and D, F sharp, F sharp, G, A, D, and done. Nice job. So that brings us to number four. I know, we skip number three. In number four, we get to experience connecting our bows yet again, plus playing all the notes that we've learned. E, F sharp, G. Let's start by saying the note names. Ready? Page 18, number four. Say it, don't play it. One, two, ready, go. E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, D, E, G, G, F sharp, D, E, rest, rest. G, F sharp, Ah. Now notice through all of the half notes, I sustain my voice. Let's make sure that when we air bow, we sustain the motion in our arm. So here is our bow, and let's air bow through. Start with the bow up and down with the frog near your face, and as we do our long legato notes, make sure our arm is always moving. Here we go, page 18. Number four, air bow. Ready, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, stop your bow. One, two. Great job. Next up, we're going to do pizzicato. When we're doing pizzicato, we 
we want to always look ahead. We've said the note names and we've airbowed the note names, so hopefully we know the music well enough that we don't have to worry too much about which note we're playing and we can focus more on the sound of the note and playing it at the right time. So let's get our instruments up over a button. Make sure that our instruments are relaxed on our shoulder, that they're resting on our bodies, making sure that we are balanced and that our shoulders are open. Here is page 18, number four, pizzicato. Instruments up. One, two, pizzicato. E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, D, E, G, G, F sharp, D, E. Rest, rest. G, F sharp, E, D, E, E, A, F sharp, D, E, E, A. And now, if you feel comfortable identifying the note names, if you feel comfortable with the rhythm in your row, and if you feel comfortable with where you place them with the left hand, let's put it all together. Put your instrument up, place the bow on the string, check in with your bow hand, are your fingers curved? Relax the arm and let natural weight help you pull the bow across the string. Here we are, page 18, number four, with the bow. One, two, ready, and one. Nice job. That's page 18, number four. And that's what we'll finish this page with. Now I always recommend do every exercise, but as far as learning new material, that's everything that page 18 covers. So next up, make sure you know everything on this page and then find that video for page 19. Thanks for being your best selves. And remember, if you practice every day, by the end of the year, you'll be taller.
Thank you. 